what is going on x community exostomp here and today people we're going to be doing the post draft power rankings for aeron division and joining me as per the last two is going to be solo hello how's it going everyone all right so uh if you guys didn't watch the last two videos and you, you were just waiting on aeron you just wanted to see yourself we'll just explain it uh so Probably should have explained on the other two videos, actually, but it's fine. Uh, individual rankings, we take those individual ranking rankings, we add them all up, and then we divide them by however many people uh, did the rankings. So this time, it was five people. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's how it worked. And then we basically took all those rankings, we ordered them from 12th to 1st, and that's how you got your rankings. So, if... Yeah, that, that, that's basically it. If you're still confused, let me know. Um, also, I did say this in the layer on one, but I might as well say it in the air on one. Uh, since some of you guys are, are new or a little inexperienced, um, if you guys do need help uh, changing up your team a little bit, we will uh, mention a few things. Uh, but if we did miss something or if you want to change another Pokemon, let me know or let, let us know in general. Uh, last season... The 12th person for the post power rankings, Ozzy, uh, wanted help because, we, yeah, we, we put him 12th and he he wasn't comfortable with his team either. So I gave him a few trades. He made those trades, went 8 0. So, really, trades are kind of big, right? Like, if you, you're ranked 12th, but you're comfortable with your team and you do well, that's fine. Honestly, these are just opinion based, so guys, don't don't take it too seriously. But yeah, all right. So twelfth is going to be the Stonky Stack Attackers. Um, I think we all were on the same page here. I rank them a little bit higher. Uh, actually, don't remember why. But if you want to talk about them, I'll, I'll grab my thing. Yeah, it's surprising because they have a ditto. You know, usually your Ditto teams are like last. <laughs> yeah, um, this team just, I don't know if it really works well together. Like, I don't know, they just doesn't look like it synergizes at all. Except for maybe the Tentacle and Bronze Arm. That's really it. And Blaziken's really the only threatening Mon on this team. Yeah. So, this... Yeah, it's just really the whole synergy for me. I don't really see the team working well together. And that was really my biggest problem with it. And the low breaking potential. Yeah, that's that's definitely uh, fair points. Um, let's see. I said this team is just weird for me. I don't know if it's just the ditto or what. Uh, but I feel like, like it's missing a lot. I don't see any cores that are filled, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but here I actually think it is. The offensive pressure isn't really there either. Uh, actually, the synergy itself isn't really there. This whole team is also, well, a lot of this team is very substitute weak. Those last three mons, very substitute weak. Ditto, Ranzong, and of course, like Galar, um, which isn't good when most mons learn it. I do think that this team is fixable, but it's going to need a lot of changes. Uh, some on, like, the, the top six definitely aren't bad Pokemon. I, these these Pokemon in general on this team aren't bad, besides Ditto, uh, aren't bad in their own right. But I do think that they don't synergize at all, which is a bad thing. Like, for instance... If you look at uh, Espeon and Ninetales, I feel like they kind of do the same thing besides Set of Veil, obviously. They they pressure kind of the same exact Mons. Uh, I don't know. It, they just they don't synergize together, and I think that's the biggest thing on this team. Uh, yeah, all right. So let's move on here to the 11th which is the Delta Ducks. So I put them 12th. Uh, everyone else put them around 10th or 11th. 
Uh, again, we kind of all agreed that they were around this rank. Uh, it's kind of the same idea as the last team. Um, biggest thing here, and you yeah. guys... Yeah. <laughs> biggest thing here... It's pretty random. Is Yeah, it is very random. There's a few mods that literally do like almost the same thing. Poltegeist and Chandelure. Uh, you got... Where was it? There was another Pokemon in here. Um, the biggest thing, though, has a remover being just Butterfree. And it's a Butterfree. That's not very good. Especially because you have a lot of Pokemon that don't want to take chip from Hazard. So, yeah. That's, that's not very good at all here. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, that Butterfree was really the one of the biggest problems for me. I mean, that's not even a mon you want to bring at all. <laughs> and, and when it's the only hazard mover, you're, now you're forced to bring it. Um, you mentioned Chandelure and Poltergeist doing the same thing. I do dis disagree with that because one's a sweeper, one's more of a breaker. Um, so I'm fine with them both being on the same team. Only problem is you don't really have good resist. You know, uh, since you know, only ghost immunity. Um, I mean, I kind of like the offensive pressure on the team, but like, I, I just like Chandelure as a mom in general. I also like Breloom. So Chino's okay. Stealth work could be good at times, but the team's missing a lot to be ranked uh, higher. Yeah. Yeah. I, I also feel like this team is. It just has a random assortment of mons. They don't, they work yeah. very, very well together. The Gigalith obviously sets up sand for the Shuckles, but def, I guess. Uh, there's a few mons that want to run Sash or can run Sash, but they kind of can't if Gigalith is on the field, like Poltegeist, Slurpuff, uh, Selgor. So. Yeah, it, it, there's like there's no synergy, kind of like the same thing with the other team. Uh, but yeah, that's basically it. All right, let's move on. Here we got the leering lichen rocks for tenth. All right, um, again, we were all kind of on the same page here. Uh, Let me actually look at what I said. Yeah, you have two bad fire types, two non defensive, you have two offensive water types. Um, what else? And Sharpeel is really, Sharpeel is your only ghost resist. Yeah. So this team is missing a lot that you kind of need. Um, I, I think you get a better fire type. Maybe drop one of your wire types. And maybe another mon. And maybe just drop Spirit Tomb and Sharpedo. Maybe get like a pure dark type. There is one. And I feel like this team could be a lot better. That's... that. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, let me see... I said ha hazards being hazards are fine, but Steelix being your only rocker is iffy. But it's it's okay because it's probably the most reliable rocker in low tier. Um, I said I was really confused about the Sharpedo pick since you already have a dark type and you already have an offensive water type, like you we brought up. Uh, same thing with Torquette. Kind of feels random because you have a Combuskin that is just better. Um. I would suggest trading out Torquette and Sharpedo for maybe like a Noivern uh, and then dropping Slagoo for something else. Because uh, no Noivern, Noivern doesn't look bad on this team. Um, it can give you a better or another Rapid Spinner or it's not Rapid Spinner, another uh, Defogger because besides Weezing Galar and Serena which are fine uh, you would have another one but I think it would 
give you a really solid fairy dragon steel core probably the best in this uh draft and yeah i i think it would kind of fit your team uh, a little bit more than the sharpedo and Torah cat <laughs> yeah there's also no uh wish pass on the team true yeah that that could be an issue because steelix and wheezing and they don't have reliable recovery so yeah that could be an issue yeah all right move on with next we have the ninth which is sydney steelix so i kind of want to no. <laughs> oh no <laughs> all right listen i i initially put you at first okay i i like this team it may have been the colors however uh th don't don't you dare i see you don't you dare do god damn it all right um the reason i i changed it was because the reasons that i i wrote made it seem that you you weren't first and I, I was like why did why did i put them here probably because of the colors so i changed it um the reason is why is there a durant here okay you have a hustle mon you have a bug seal already you have speaking about steel you have another steel an offensive steel type there i feel like durant is the most random pick it's not even like speed tier everything that it does is filled Speaking about everything that something does is filled, you also have that Wigglytuff that gets filled in by the Florgus. It's a wish-passing fairy type. If you got it for it being a normal type, there are way better normal types uh, that you can fill this in with. I would probably suggest trading out your Durant and Wigglytuff, trying to find uh, a normal type, and then using the rest of your points to uh, probably find a dark type. Since you don't have a dark type on this team, I think dark can help out this team pretty well. Yeah, um, I'm just trying to look what his first pick was. Okay, they picked Durant first. Okay. And then Kabalian. And then I'm pretty sure they picked Fortress. Okay. I don't know if that was a trade. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. First you pick a bug and steel type. <laughs> then you pick another steel type. And then... Four rounds later, you pick another bug steel type. And the round before that, you pick a second hustle on. Like, I'm sorry, but what what are you doing? <laughs> um Yeah. Three steel types. Two months of hustle. That's and two R types. I just oh. I, I don't know what this team is. The water types are fine. Because Intellion's offensive mainly and Manthine's defensive. So I, I didn't I didn't mention that. The only positive is that when you have two hustle mods, if you hit your moves, something's gonna die <laughs> most of the time. Um, however, you're gonna miss a lot of moves that you need to hit, and I'll probably end up losing you the game. So I'll give it like two weeks before you drop at least one of the mods, and maybe four weeks until you drop both. <laughs> That's my guess. You know what? If this goes up and you change it pretty much right away, I'll give you props because that's that's probably the best decision. Uh, the last thing I did want to mention that I actually forgot to mention, I I don't probably people don't like this pick. I love Pig Knight here. Pig Knight is great. I used to use it all the time in ZU back in I don't know Gen what was it six? I can't remember exactly, but uh really really fun mon to use the reason why it's fun is because it has thick fat it already resists ice and fire and if we look at this team what's four times weak to fire well we got the tarant and the fortress and cobalion is still weak to fire and then what's weak to ice the flapple uh and then with freeze dry and teleon and mantine's four times weak for there so and Sigilyph this week. So Pig Knight kind of fills in those gaps of what's weak to ice and fire. I like it. 
I don't know if it's gonna do much, but I I I can understand the pick. I like it. Yeah, it's a good pick. All right, let's move on here to eighth. We got the St. Louis Charizards. The St. Louis Charizards. Um. Props to you for getting Tauros and Glaceon. I appreciate it. You know, I love those. Uh, those are some really good picks there. Uh, I kind of don't understand why there's two water types on this team that are defensive. They kind of do the same thing besides one. Well, I wouldn't say the same exact thing, but they're defensive water types. Um, I don't know. This team just feels kind of awkward i think the low the lower mons on this team don't do anything how do you feel yeah um you pretty much said what my problems was in my rankings i wrote that the team doesn't really support reggie draco i mean yeah you have a salazzle but that's really only one mon that really supports it well everything else is eh Like, yeah, that, that was really my biggest problem. Like, I feel like Reggie Draco is kind of the backbone of this team. And, like, Slazzle's really the only thing. Um, keeping, checking those carries. I mean, Polyon's not really offensive enough. So, yeah, that was my biggest problem with the team. Hmm. That's, that's fair. Uh, let me see. The other... There's another reason. Okay, yeah. So this, the massive speed tier gap between Tauros and Regidrago is it's, it's enormous. Uh, 110 to 80. That's that's a 30 point speed gap, which isn't. Uh, it's it's not the worst, but it's not good at all. Like if Amon is base 100, they won't obviously be trying to outspeed your. 110 and above so they won't they'll be able to use a lot of their uh, points their EVs to be put into HP or defense or spadef whatever which can actually be really big for your slower more defensive mons and yeah it, that could be a big issue actually uh, going into these coming weeks um I do like the Cub Fu pick. I think was that that was that that has to be one point. Uh, I don't know yeah. what Cub Fu's gonna be doing, but I, I like it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, right. let's, let's move on. We got the seventh, which okay, all right. So do you want to explain what happened here? Yeah. So uh, I for, I forgot what their name was, but there there was another team that drafted. And did their greatest period transactions and then they end up dropping for personal reasons uh, i don't want to say more than that um yeah so the rankings we see here are based on the other team because like i said they dropped after grace so all the rankings were already in and then this is what you, the uh, team you see here is what they uh did have um the new person took over switched Rimsakov for bravery they switched uh, Quillfish for Regice. Um, I need, yeah, I need to see the rest. One second. All right, Hitmonlee for Quillfish, Regice for Cooper Jaw, Pearl Swine for Wishy Washy, and Bravery for Whimsicott. Hmm. Uh, which, in my opinion, makes the team actually worse. And I put them at 11, so <laughs> maybe I knew. Yeah. But, yeah. Everyone liked the old team. Um, yeah, the, the new picks don't really make much sense here. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I think the Quillfish was fine here. I think the Wishy Wash was kind of redundant when you have another water type, so I was fine getting rid of. But everything else, like Whimsicott, Quillfish, Copper Raja, they just 
they were kind of a staple for this team. It's it's kind of hard to get rid of them because, especially if you get rid of them for typings that don't either don't need to be covered or you cover them already. It just it doesn't make sense. Um, but still, I I still think it should be around this rank because uh, you still do have that that trick room with P two Hatterene. Uh, a little Marowak, which can very easily take on most mons in low tier. Uh, maybe not stack Attacka, but yeah. Uh, actually, well, P2 can take on stack Attacka, so that's fine. Um, but yeah, besides that, as removers, at least on this initial team, was only Whimsicott. I think... You said, okay, they had Hitmonlee, they had Braviary. Is that it for hazard removers? Uh, well, Hitmonlee has Rapid Spin. Braviary has Defog. So they have a couple removers. Okay. Yeah. I think they, they helped out the removers a little bit. But overall, I, I think they should probably still be around the 7th or may, maybe maybe 8th. Pending. Uh, yeah. yeah. Alright, let's move on here. We got the Denver Dracalogies at 6th. Um, we all kind of put them around the same spot besides DDA. And, uh, well, the reasoning was because Pershurikin did not want to drop the bottom three bonds, uh, which I believe were it was Lunatone, Porygon, and Wooper for Claydol. Uh as of recording this, Broshurkin did trade those mons out for Claydol, so DDA would probably put them forth if it was before Grace. Since it wasn't before Grace, we, we these are post draft power rankings, so we can't really count it yet. So for now, they'll be sixth, but if DDA's uh rank did go through it would probably be around fourth uh, so yeah, it's just something to note initially. Um, yeah, um, I, I really like the team. It's pretty much as, uh, DDA's, uh, uh, reasoning. If, if this team had played all instead of the other three, uh, during, before Grace ended, I'll probably have this team maybe up to, so... That was really the biggest problem for me. Like, I like everything else about it. Yeah. Yeah, because Claydol, Claydol completely helps out this team. I mean, let's say, okay, I got Porygon because I wanted a Trick Rumor. Well, Claydol does that. I got Lunatone because I needed a Rocker. Well, Claydol does that. Um, I needed Wooper because it's a ground. Well... Claydol does that. I just, Claydol is just, it's, it's perfect. It's perfect for this team. So, uh, yeah, definitely helps it out. And it does count as yet another pivot for this team. And like I mentioned before, pivot with strong fighting types like Heracross, they just, they completely destroy teams because of how, how it synergizes. Now, <sighs> Do I think it would be higher than 5th for me if those trades went through? Uh, yes, probably 3rd in my eyes. Maybe, yeah, probably 3rd. Um, let's see. Their Fairy Dragon Steel is only covered by 2 mons, which is fine. Uh, strong. Klefki and Trigalogies are very strong. Firewater Grass is pretty good. Lorant is surprisingly good. Uh... Yeah, I don't know. I think all these the typings covered are covered very well. I think um, there's nothing that screams, "Oh, you're weak to this type." Uh, so, yeah, I think that just makes up a good team, in my opinion. Yeah. All right. Let's go on to the next, which is fifth. We got the big cheeses. Uh, please send me your logo, please. Um, I put them seventh. You put them sixth. Uh, DDA put them first, so that's why they're fifth. 
Uh, I'm actually going to pull that up right now. Uh, he said, um, he didn't say anything. Uh, oh, yes, he put good. Text. Okay, yes. Uh, well, that, that helps us out very much. So, we don't know. I probably should have asked him, but it is what it is. Uh, I think he saw Incineroar. And he's like, yo, I picked that. Hold up. Oh, wait, Aromatis? That's got to be number one. Uh, no, I don't know. But why do we put them as seven? Do you want to start with this one? Seven, seven. Yeah. Um. So, yes, they have a lot of pivot. But what are you really pivoting into? Like Flygon, <laughs> Foxcroak. Those are your most offensive mods to pivot into. Eh. You know, that, that's really my biggest problem. Our offense is lacking. You also only have, have Frost Lass as your Hazard Setter, which is only Spikes. And then your movers are Crobat and Flygon, and with Flygon being your most offensive Mon, you probably don't want to run Defog on that, so then you really only have Crobat. And yeah. Yeah, that's fair. Um, surprised you put them 6th, because there's, there's a lot of things that are kind of wrong with this team um well it's air on division i mean there's <laughs> a lot of teams where uh maybe, maybe it will work true true this, uh, this, this was like the sixth uh non like out of all the bad teams this was like not as bad that's fair maybe um <laughs> uh, on the bright side, the defensive Pokemon have some pretty good offensive moves. Uh, Incineroar could be pretty offensive. Uh, Politoed could be, you know, it got Belly Drum. That's pretty good. Uh, Poltergeist, Gorgai sounds fun. Uh, Frostless is is mixed, so it can have Poltergeist or Triple Axle now. Um, or it could be like a Shadow Ball set. It's pretty cool. Flygon, this team, it has to be offensive. If it's defensive, I, I don't think you have any offensive pressure like we said. Um, but yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head here. I don't think I have much to say other than what you said. Uh, I said not a horrible draft, but definitely not one of my favorites either. Um, yeah, I, I think... Finding a a rocker or two, as well as maybe another hazard remover, could drastically help your team. I don't think Kling Clang does anything for this team. I think it's just there to be a steel type, and that's that's not very good. Uh, I think you could uh, Kling Clang. I'm pretty sure. Let me check real quick. Uh, tier is it in? Kling Clang. Isn't it in six points? Draft board. Yeah, it's in six points. And if I remember correctly, there's a few. Uh, yeah, there is. Okay, there's a few steel types that are in six points, um, that are just better than Kling Clang. Uh, let's see. So there is Galarian Stunfisk, which. Um, wouldn't have the same weaknesses as Flygon, so that wouldn't be a bad pick. Uh, it would also give you another ha uh, it would give you Stealth Rocks, which is just better. It, it wouldn't give you more offense, but I mean, it's not it's not bad. Um, where is Doug Trio Lola? Eight points. Okay, well, yeah, I don't know. You you could try to swap stuff around. Um, all in all, though, I think I think. It's not bad. It's in the middle. So, yeah. Let's move on. Slate Port Scissors are next. Uh, Alright. I put them second. So, yeah. Uh, I don't know why you put them second. Yeah. I don't know why people have them high here. Like, me and DDA both thought they were seventh. Well, why? Alright. Uh, where to start? Um. Okay, let's sort of speed tier. You got Slow 125, then Milk Tank is not running speed, q should not be coming to any game. Blastoise is your next fastest. So you go from like 125 to 78, 
But guess what? Blastoise is defensive. Now you go from 125 to 70. <laughs> Um, let's, let's go to removal next. You have Swallow, Cutie Fly, and Blastoise. Like I said, Cutie Fly should not be coming in the game. <laughs> and if you do, it's probably only going to set webs and then die the next turn. So that doesn't really count here. Swallow doesn't want to run Defog because it should be offensive. And then you have Blastoise. Thing is, we, we have, uh, we have, uh, we're, the, we're allowing Shell Smash now. So if your Blastoise is not, so if you're if you're putting Rapid Spin on your Blastoise, and you probably don't have Shell Smash on it, which just lowers its usefulness by a ton, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So, with all that, your removers are kind of all bad, you know, and you're sacrificing offensive pressure if you do put D5 on Swallow or Rapid Spin on Blastoise, and that was really my biggest problem for the team. Those are definitely fair. Um, yeah, I didn't really realize the speed tiers on this team. You have a good point. Uh, let me see. Let me see what I wrote real quick. Defensive core of Weezing Registeel in combination with Scrafty just gives me a headache looking at it. Yeah, th those three Pokemon work very well together. Kind of like... What I talked about uh, on the last Scrafty team in Laron, if you guys uh, watched that. Um, Weezing, Registeel, perfect together. They're actually perfect. And then Scrafty, to top that off, uh, it being very weak, those two help out that drastically. Um, the, I will say, the offense isn't perfect, but there are some really strong offensive Pokemon on this team. Um... Blastoise can be Swellow, very strong. Hoopa, very strong. But not too much um, physical. Not much. Uh, Scrafty, I guess. But it's mainly just tanky. So that could be uh, another problem here. Uh, Flareon being able to wish pass to your, your tanky cores can be also a very annoying, uh, annoying thing. Uh, the speed is kind of low for a team like this, Swallow being the only main speedy mon, and the offense looks a tad weak. Yeah, okay, so that's, that's basically what I wrote. Yeah, other than that, you said hazard movers, I agree. Um, yeah, I don't know, I, I I like this team. I think this team can be super annoying. Uh, Blastoise, Weezing, Scrafty, Registeel, Swallow. I mean, most of these mons, I just personally despise versing so i'm like if i despise them and they're all working together god damn this is like an evil team in a in a movie i, oh, I don't want to verse them so uh yeah i, I had to put them second because I, I feel like they they work pretty well together all right all right let's move on here to the third place team we got the bronx bewares Alright, so we were kind of all on the same page. GDA ranked him a little lower, uh, but that's that's fine. Um, let's see. The main gripes were <clears throat> that... Let's see. You're missing two pretty big types, and that is Steel and Ghost. Uh, ghost? Well, let me see. Uh, no, there's the Jellison. All right, steel. You're missing steel. Okay, so uh, the resistances and immunities that the uh, resistance and immunity that come with uh, steel is so big, especially in low tier. Uh, I will say sometimes it is very hard to find a good steel later on in the draft, but you do have stuff like Corvus Squire, which doesn't fill in any role it kind of is just there uh i think that's two points maybe there is i doubt this is a steel type let me see um ah there's clang in here you can use clang there you go see easy no um <laughs> i i do like the dene pick though i like 
even though it's it's your uh, well not it's not your only fairy type it's your only electric type but i still think that the dene is kind of underrated it has grass knot that can cover those uh pesky ground types and stuff that come in on it it's got nuzzle which is fun it's got a cycle it's, it's it's a fun mon to use i i will give it uh we'll give mcgirdles that um i don't know what what, what would you like to add I like the offense on this team. You have Porygon, supported by Embor, to hit those Steel and fighting uh, Steel and Rock types that resist the uh, its normal type moves. Um, I think in a uh, maybe an offensive Dark type would have been maybe a little better to hit the Ghost. But Umbreon and Jellison are still really good defensively. So yeah, I think it's just good overall. It's just like I said, missing the Steel type. Maybe a couple more or better hazard removers. Yeah. So yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. That's yeah. It is very strong offensively. So I, I don't think this team is bad by any means. I think this team like you don't need to change anything. Um, I just personally I don't feel like quarter square gives you anything uh there are a few two pointers i mean you already have the dene but uh there are a few two pointers that do more than corvus square here because corvus square wants to run heavy duty boots but also wants to run a violate but you're also not going to be bringing it <laughs> over aerodactyl or yeah mainly aerodactyl so you know there's, there's a few options i mean i guess if you want clang you could i mean it's there if you want a steel type uh I don't know. There's there's options. Croconos there. It's not not a bad Pokemon. Um, Abra, but you have Gardevoir. Eh. But yeah. Basically, that's it. So yeah, let's move on here to the second place team, which is Ginger's team, the Bisharps. We're not we're not gonna say it's too hard. We're not gonna say your name. Okay, I'm sorry. The Bisharps. So. First, I like to say thank you for listening to me and grabbing a hazard remover. We really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, for uh, those who don't know, we had Jolteon, so Rotom fan, and so he had zero removers. I uh, suggested that he got one, and he did. So I'm very glad he did. Makes the team a lot better because he have a Delphox and a Moltres Galar, which are weak to rocks. So. Now you have removal, which is good. Because usually Moltres doesn't always want to run boots. Like sometimes you want to run like weakness policy or some other move. I guess Delphox though does want to run boots. Not really sure, I don't really use it that much. So, it, yeah. it it wants to run there's a there's a bunch of sets Delphox can run. I've seen sub calm mind, I've seen uh power herb magician solar beam. I've seen a bunch of sets for it. Uh, I think even like flame charge online kind of set even though that that can be heavy duty so yeah um i i think yeah i think i agree with that i, I think if <laughs> i think if ginger didn't have a single defogger this team would probably be like seven May, maybe six probably yeah the, the team like because like we have marshy in the ag one who doesn't have any removal but for that i don't really like think it matters too much because it's an offensive team you're just trying to step and win but with ginger's team it's kind of like more balanced so you're going to be switching a lot so you're going to need some removal otherwise like the makarola is going to take uh too much just over the long term yeah but yeah um pivot is kind of lacking only reason why i probably don't have a first although the team first really good but other than that, I like the team a lot. Yeah, the team the team has good offenses, good defenses. There is nothing huge that it's missing. Uh, let me just look at what I wrote on my thing real quick. Uh, offenses, you say, yep, team is great. Okay, however, you are missing some key things. For one, it's only got one hazard remover. Although Rotom Fan is good, uh, I don't think you want to bring it to every game. Uh, I mean, I kind of agree with that, but I don't. I didn't take off many points for that. Uh, low amount of pivot could possibly be an issue to get your fur alligator in safely. 
Uh, and lastly, I don't know what Meowstic is doing here. That's a big thing. Same speed tier as Delphox. Same psychic typing. Uh, I said you probably grab it for Prankster. Uh, but honestly, I don't know if it's needed here specifically. Uh, you could possibly get something better for the price. Maybe like another hazard remover. So, yeah, that's that's probably... Like screens, though. Yeah. For Meowstic. Yeah, Prankster screens isn't bad. You have a... Like, you have a Feral Gear and Tyrantrum that I want to set up. Even, even with just Galar, too. So I, I do like the Meowstic because of the Prankster screens. But is it um, giving more value than, like, another removal? You know, it's up to you. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I don't know. I, I think there are plenty of setup mods on this team. Uh, but the thing is, yes... Prankster Light Screen Reflect is good, but you have uh, Rotom Fan that can also do, uh, I mean, it won't have Prankster, but it has Light Screen and Reflect now that you have it. It's not bad. Uh, it can work the same way. Again, it, it won't have Prankster, but I don't, I don't know if Prankster is necessarily needed here. And if Meowstic is specifically only for Prankster Light Screen and Reflect, I don't know. I, I think if you get another hazard remover, it might help out a little more, but I'm not sure. Uh, I'd have to look at the tier and see what would fit. But yeah, all in all, I like this team. You like this team. Uh, we all are kind of in agreement. Uh, right. the, the next team, I think almost all of us are synergized here. We're all kind of on the same page here. Uh, may, maybe not initially, but I'll mention that real quick. We got Sweaty Palms, DJ Malice. So, um, initially, I ranked them 6th, and I swapped my 6th and my, my 1st, uh, because kind of agreed, um, but, yeah, anyways, um, you, you always put them first, so I kind of want to hear from you first here. Yeah, this team is really good, I mean... Time has everything. You know, offense is good. Defense is good. Has removal. Has out of center. Has pivot. Speed tiers are eh, nothing over 100, but. And then you go from 95 to 75, which isn't great, but it's alright. You know, not the worst. Um, yeah, I just felt like it was the best built team out of all of them. The main reason I put them first. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I was looking at this when I put them sixth with them only having one hazards uh, setter for the Stealth Rocks being Swampert. Even though Swampert's a good Stealth Rocker, you kind of want another option in case you want to run Swampert as an offensive Mon um, for a game. But what was the other thing? Uh, you already mentioned the speed tiers. Nothing above base 100. It's kind of big. Comfy. Uh, obviously has priority. Uh, but I don't know. You, you kind of want something, anything above base 100. Uh, but yeah. And then the 95 to 75. Uh, honestly, you basically mentioned everything. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I put them six, but... I changed my mind because the team works pretty well together. I, I will say that... Oh, where is Blossom, actually? Let me see. Blossom... Wait, where is Blossom? What? Oh, Blossom's four points? Oh, that's that's a good value right there. Um, I was going to say, if you had, like, Thwacky over Blossom, but that's an extra three points, so I guess you wouldn't need to do that. Um... Uh, Thwacky works pretty well on this team because this team is not the best at fighting ground types. Uh, you got the Drapion, the Toxtricity, the Typhlosion, uh, the Escavalier, which is a bug, but is not resisting those ground moves. So Blossom and then Zatu are your only immunity slash resistances for Earthquake. Could be an issue, but... Overall, I don't see it as being the, the biggest issue here. Ah, 
yeah, the ground is a bit of a problem, but I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Um, all right. So that was the Aeron post draft power rankings. Uh, obviously, if you guys enjoyed, leave a like. If you didn't leave a dislike, leave a comment. Let me know what I did wrong or right. Uh, and yeah, that's that's about it, guys. So <laughs> uh, if you guys enjoyed, definitely uh, definitely do those things. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time, guys. Peace. Bye.